Hello friends and family, Tom from the VR Life Act. Are you tired of the game breaking lag, random disconnects or drop offs? Or how about the infamous headset not detected error message when you're using your Quest and virtual desktop to play PC VR games wirelessly? Yeah, I'm tired of them too. Well today, we're gonna try to fix that. I'm Marcus and welcome to WinVR. Your home of to the point news, reviews, opinions and gameplay. So sit back and relax while I get to the point. Okay, let's begin by debunking the myth that a poor internet connection is the cause of all these problems. In fact, with the last virtual desktop update, an internet connection is not even required. Let me show you. So here's my laptop, running Steam in offline mode and the virtual desktop streaming app. With only a hardline connection to my router, no modem, no internet, no problem. So let's jump into the quest and debunk this myth. Okay, so here we are on my quest. I'm gonna go right into the virtual desktop And here we go. So now it's searching for my laptop. It's going to pop up and say that, hey, you have no internet down here. Ah, there you go. Not connected to the internet, only showing local computers. There goes my laptop. Connected. And here we are. Ah, my laptop's desktop. This is Steam VR running in offline mode, showing no internet. And what I want to do is I'm going to go into the virtual desktop streamer app setup. And I'm going to start Steam VR from here. When Steam VR first starts, since it has no internet connection, it always starts here. But if you just go into the Steam menu, be it here, and go into your Browse All, it will show you everything you have. If you want to go into all your installed games, you can do that. So I want to jump into some Half-Life Alex. Why not? And voila, loaded, loading. Valve, Half-Life Alex, and it's running. The truth is using virtual desktop to play PC VR games wirelessly is all about your router. You can have a super powered PC or a shadow PC with the infinite plan and the fastest internet money can buy. But if your router is not up to the task or just poorly optimized, none of that matters. With that being said, let's make sure your router's up to the task. If you're still using an aging single band router like this one, it's definitely time to upgrade. But be careful, there are a lot of dual band routers out there for a great price, but they fail to mention that they don't support five gigahertz and they don't support the new wireless AC standard recommended by virtual desktop. If possible, I would suggest a tri-band router. While pricier, it will give you the freedom to put your Quest on its own five gigahertz band without affecting any of the other wireless devices in your household. That's a win. Before we move on, make sure your computer has a wired connection to your router. So let's start optimizing. Step one is to go to netspotapp.com, link in the description. Click Get Netspot and download the free version. Once installed, start the application. Click Continue and let it run for about 30 seconds. It will pull up every active Wi-Fi network within your router's footprint. Don't be alarmed, there will be a lot. Next, click on the Signal tab to bring your router's SSIDs to the top of the list and check the boxes next to them. Followed by clicking on the Channel tab. This will show you how many other routers are sharing the same channel. The more routers, the more interference. This degrades your router's overall performance. For now, let's minimize the app. Armed with this knowledge, let's go online and jump into your router. Next, navigate to your guest network settings and disable all guest accounts. If you use these accounts, at a minimum, password protect them to prevent unwanted connections to your network. I would still suggest disabling the guest network on your five gigahertz band entirely. This prevents any additional bandwidth from being used on that band. New smart routers with shared SSIDs will automatically switch your device to the band with less traffic. So go to your wireless settings and give each band a unique SSID. This will stop your Quest from jumping back and forth between the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, causing random disconnects. Within the wireless settings, you should also be able to change your control channel. By default, it is set to auto. Change the control channel to a free channel based on the NetSpot app. Also, select an extension channel if that option is available. Doing this will require you to reconnect all your wireless devices. At this point, you can use your 5 GHz band solely for your Quest and essential devices. With that being done, let's jump back in the Quest so I can show you what's the best way to start a game from within the virtual desktop environment. Okay, so here we are back in the Quest, 100% online. So what you can do is go back into virtual desktop. And here we are, I'm gonna connect back to my desktop. Internet connected, everything's high speed. So here we are, we're online on my desktop. I would highly suggest starting Steam, not Steam VR, but Steam or the Oculus software prior to launching any games. And when you launch a game, 
I would highly suggest going into the games tab and launching games from here because launching games within the games tab will launch it automatically telling the system that you're launching it with your request so when you do it from here you avoid the system not detecting your request because it's launching it through your quest through virtual desktop so for example if I wanted to go into my Steam library, I could just go in here and jump into Boneworks if I want, and it will automatically start Steam VR. It will bring you into the Steam VR homepage, well, the Steam VR area, and it will just launch Boneworks. No more dealing with that. Oh, it, Steam VR didn't see your request before you try to launch. No more 108 errors. It's just gonna work, and just like that, you have it. And the same way you got it here. You can exit it. You can exit VR. It's going to bring you back to your desktop because you'll still be in virtual desktop. You can go right back here and you can go from playing the Steam game to playing an Oculus game just by clicking. Now, if the Oculus software already running, it's automatically going to launch Asgard's Wrath because that's what I selected. It might take a second, but it'll come up and you'll be good to go. Never have to worry about not seeing your headset. So assuming you have a VR-ready PC, a router that supports the wireless AC standard and a decent internet connection, by following these steps, you should have eliminated any lag from a congested network, any random dropouts or disconnects from your quest trying to jump between different bands on your router, and their infamous headset not detected message by initiating all games from within the virtual desktop environments. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. And as always, I'm Marcus. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.